Hey, what's good, crew? Welcome to the another episode of the Feed Me, Feel Me podcast. There's and Jeff coming at you from Madison, Wisconsin, the CrossFit Games 2018. And we are sitting down with Justin Lofranco, the creator of the Morning Chalk Up. What's good, man? Dude, Madison is good. This, this town has been absolutely amazing these last four or five days. Um, the excitement that's going on here in the town, um, it's, it's crazy. You can't go more than a couple blocks without seeing something CrossFit related, mm-hmm. somebody wearing CrossFit clothes, Reeboks, Nikes, Nobles, you name it. Um, and that's fantastic because, uh, you know, the big difference between Los Angeles and here is that, you know, you're in a, in a, in a big pond with, you know, 20, 30,000 people over there, and we're 60,000 people in a 200,000 person town. Right. Um, so the energy and excitement here is really cool, and that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and you're based out of California, and you so you, and you've been around long enough to have had both experiences, yeah. both LA and Madison. Exactly. Uh, aside from everything that you just mentioned, the the event in and of itself, CrossFit Games Week. Which do you prefer, Madison or LA? Oh, Madison, 100. percent I'm, yeah. I'm born and raised in California, and don't get me wrong, I would love to just drive down to Carson mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you know make it an easier trip. But the experience here is way better. Yeah. Um, this is just a this is a great feel for the CrossFit community, and I think small towns. And this is not a small town, but this is a small midwestern city. Yeah. Um, it's only two or I think or two hundred fifty thousand people here, and we dominate this place. Right. I mean, yeah. last night we were having sushi down in a restaurant, and I walk outside and I see at least, you know, five groups of CrossFitters walking down the street, <laughs> and everybody's here together, and that vibe makes it fun because you yeah. can always run into somebody and. You know what's unique about CrossFit is we have a common language. Mm-hmm. We can talk about things. We we you know we know we see you know oh there's a, there's there's a CrossFitter yeah. there's a guy you know with I see the colors you don't even need to know what <laughs> shoes it is you can just see them from a distance <laughs> and the way they walk and the way they they talk and they're so courteous and they're fun and they they they'll talk to anybody you know you never have a, a fear of running into somebody you don't know who's right. a CrossFitter like you just automatically just start talking about the games and what's going sure. on. And did you see that when Matt Frazier fell or Patrick Bellner <laughs> fell off the ropes or, or whatever, or talking about you know their favorite athletes and stuff. Yeah. So this vibe is really cool. Dude, I got to give it to you, man, because, uh, you know, we, we were chatting it up yesterday and I've been uh, I've been a subscriber to the Morning Chalk Up for two or three years. Oh, now. man, you're early. Yeah. You, you saw when it was really bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, was, it was literally just a, an <laughs> MVP it, model. I, you know, I, I got a hold of you back when it was literally an email and bullet points. You yep, know what I mean? That's like basically er, early, 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 early. And uh, you've not missed a day. Yep. Since then. Yep. Um, and you're just, you're a hub for CrossFit content. Um, but for everybody who doesn't know who you are or what the Morning Chalk Up is, kind of give us the, the cliff notes of your journey from, uh, you know, the your early days in California. I know you had a, a short stint in Washington, D.C. Right. Uh, in, in politics. And now you're, you're just crushing it, keeping everybody yeah. up to speed on the, the need to know and who to know in, in CrossFit. So, like, how did, where is that evolution? Yeah, so the 30,000-foot level... D- description of what Morning Chalk Up is. is essentially we are Monday through Friday, except during the games and the regionals competition, we publish Saturdays and Sundays. We're a Monday through Friday newsletter about CrossFit, about the CrossFit community more than we are about the CrossFit games. You know, we certainly talk more about the games during the game season, but we are a newsletter that informs the CrossFit community about a the thing that they love, which is CrossFit. And we have daily tips on, you know, how to do, um, perform skills better and, mm-hmm. and, and things to eat and things to watch and things to know and uh, things to read. And uh, we write a lot of original stories connecting the CrossFit community and what's going on all around the globe, finding unique and interesting stories about what's going on in boxes and communities and affiliates and connecting those stories. Um, so that's, if you love CrossFit, you're going to love to read it. Um, and how I got into that is a much more interesting story. I graduated from college um, and moved to Washington, D.C. I was working in the United States Congress, uh, and I spent about five years working there um, and uh, sort of transitioned from there into more campaigns and elections. I I moved up to Boston and worked for Mitt Romney while he was running for president. My last job in politics was actually here in Wisconsin. I worked for the governor, um, Governor Walker, who was running for president at the time, and I was running managing uh, all of his digital content and social content. So when he dropped out of the race, I uh, kind of didn't take any other jobs. I moved to Italy and worked on a farm and uh, checked out for a couple months, came back right around Christmas, and I, and I just decided, you know, I'm done. I, I, I loved what I was doing, 
but I want to do something different. So I moved back home to California, moved into my parents' pool house, uh, and uh, was sitting on the couch, and I just put Morning Chalk Up together in about 24 hours, literally. Like I put the shell of the email together, found a name, registered a domain, got an uh, uh, email service provider to start sending out emails, and then I started uh, actually, I was sitting watching the 2016 CrossFit Games Open announcement one on Thursday night. I sent out the first edition on Saturday morning. So I did it all that night and the next day, put it together, and then I just started sending out emails. I was like committed to doing it. Just I was going to do it daily. I did it seven days a week back then I did for about a month, and then I changed it to five days a week um, so I could give myself a break. And that's how we got there. I mean, we just I just committed to start doing it. I thought, look, this CrossFit community is wide and spread out. And I want a single place where they can find out everything they need to know about what's going on in CrossFit today, mm. right now. And they, uh, they don't have to scroll through Instagram. They don't have to check this website or that website or that website. And I was really just kind of curating and aggregating it all together. And then I knew if I could be successful with that, I could move into original content. You know, but if I could meet the, if I could figure out a way to meet the demand daily for readers, I can move into original content, which is where we are now and producing that daily and, and you know, multiple times a day. What made, what made you pick CrossFit? Like, what's your, your background yeah. in athletics and made you... you I was know. just a high school sport yeah. athlete, you know, regular, playing basketball uh-huh. um, kid. And uh, I started and found CrossFit originally when I was in college. This was in 2006. Okay. And a buddy of mine introduced it to me, but it didn't stick. You know, I was still into the just go to the gym, lift weights mentality. And I hadn't, I hadn't uh, you know, I did a couple workouts with him and... Uh, he kept going with it. So, I, so later on, about 2011, um, I was training for a marathon. And uh, I was like, I remember seeing my buddy Matt uh, crossfitting so much. It's like, maybe I should do that as like some additional strength training for the, for the kind of impact that I was going to put my body through. And I was going through literally hours of running. You know, I mean, doing those long 12, 15, 18 mile runs as I was training for a marathon. So I started doing it. And I was like, man, this stuff's cool. I love it. So uh, I was actually working out in the House of Representatives gym underground, you know, after work. And I would be doing, like, dumbbell thrusters and, like, you know, Helen, like, on a treadmill. Like, <laughs> and it was ridiculous and lots of stairs. You know, you do burpees in a globo gym and people are going to look. And you do burpees <laughs> nowadays, you're probably going to look less. But back then, it was like, what is this? This guy's weird. Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool. You know, and it's sort of your badge of honor. So it was 2011 I started that, and then in 2013 I joined an affiliate after I got off of uh, Mitt Romney's campaign. After that, that ended, um, I like four or five days later I joined an affiliate back down in D.C. And uh, so I've been a big CrossFitter ever since. So CrossFit's, you know, second in my life, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's I, I try I try and balance my life around making sure I'm in the gym, and it's taught me how you know to rebalance my nutrition, my, prioritize my sleep prioritize my time and my day for active, you know, recovery, and, and it's opened a whole new community of friends for me, and mm-hmm. now a career. Yeah, That's yeah. Dope. yeah. Now, did you start the the morning chalk up with the intent of it being a an income generator for you, or were you just following your passion and wanted to share it with the community on a massive level, and which has afforded you all the opportunities yeah. you have now? I, I absolutely started as a company. I knew that... Um, you know, I, I had been running digital content and been in the back of, you know, a very smart digital operation for a number of years. And so I knew what I was doing. Um, I, I, you know, you have to test the water. So I didn't go out there and ask for money. I didn't go out there and try and do that. I said, look, it's going to take us at least 12 months to be in a position to even ask for any money mm-hmm. from anybody um, until we have trust and notoriety and a big enough audience and size and, and until we know exactly what we want to do. Yeah. So I was like, it's going to be a long commitment. And I was committed to doing that. You know, I was committed to saying, look, if I want it to be something that people read and trust daily, it's going to take time. Mm. You can't be in a hurry to do that. It's just like the CrossFit process. If I want to clean 325, I got to start with five pounds mm-hmm. every couple months. And in a couple of years, I might be there if I'm diligent and consistent and I, and I set forth a plan and a goal. So it's the same kind of mentality that I, pro- that I approach with that. It's like working on a campaign. You're like, in, you don't win the election today. You can lose it today <laughs> mm-hmm. by, you know, damaging your reputation, you know, damaging relationships with other people in the industry that you think are going to be valuable. 
um, you can lose it, like in a workout. You can you can sure lose the workout on the row, but you're not going to win it on round one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and you know you can blow yourself out of the water. It's the same concept there. So I approach that with that campaign mentality, which is we need to set everything up smart. So in the 12 months, we know we've done it right. We've collected data. We've we've been smart about our growth and our acquisition. We haven't spent our way out of the water. Mm -hmm. And um, so in 12 months, we were in a much better position, and we mm -hmm. were prepared to make investments, or we were impaired, prepared to make partnerships where we could make good on that promise on our end to to, to uh, partner with other brands and opportunities. Have you had that? Um, always had that patient mentality where you were you going to slow grow into something? No, or is that built? no, no, no. You know, it's funny because it's like a you know type A personality. The people yeah. that go to Washington D.C. to go work in 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 politics are type A hard chargers. We're like the we're the people who are up till two and we're up at six yeah. like mm -hmm. we 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 want to win it all like we're not satisfied with just this and that kind of mentality sometimes is somebody who's unwilling to wait mm -hmm. to pull back to allow things to unfold in front of them and say patience first you know so that was something i learned over time that my bosses who were very good at this very good professionals who'd been in in their industry for 20 plus years were able to um you know mentor me in as i got better uh, patience was not my default. <laughs> in fact, I, I believed you could outwork any problem that night. You know, it was like when I was in high school and I had a bad game, I went and I shot a thousand shots. You know, yeah. I was going to outwork whatever problem I had on the court that night. Yeah. Not for the next six months. I was going to do it that night. I was in a hurry to get back to training. Mm -hmm. And that mentality covered in, went into, into school or went into eventually professionals. But now it's Still the same mentality, but 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 I think harnessed in a smarter way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To say that you know, if I had been preparing for six, nine, twelve months, I wouldn't be in this losing position today. Sure. You know, I mean, Matt Frazier, I think, takes that. You know, he's not going to say, "I'm gonna, I can't win the CrossFit Games by training hard one day." I'm going to think about everything. I'm gonna. This is going to become mm -hmm. my life, my obsession. Yeah. And I'm going to focus in on this. And you can maintain balance, mostly being obsessed about something if you are planned out, if you're structured, if you are disciplined. There's time in the day for the extra things too. So I've learned that over time. It's been a huge, it's been a huge lesson, mm -hmm. and it's become even more important now that I'm responsible for making sure a company survives. Yeah, you have to. Um, constantly weigh those decisions mm -hmm. with, with an unknown outcome yeah right right now you started as a one-man show in your parents pool house yep <laughs> where are you guys at now uh, So we have a small little office downtown santa Ana, physical real estate <laughs> uh, we have a mailing address <laughs> it's not my parents house um i'm sure they're thankful for that uh so there's two of us going in there and primarily the content is actually ran by two people me and jessica Jessica's a recent add-on. She's our managing editor. And uh, so her and I go into the office about four days a week. And a lot of what we can do is remote. But it's good to have face-to-face -face time in order to talk about things and work through content and, and talk about the plan and editorial calendar, et cetera. So we have a physical office and mailing address so we can get samples from, from, from generous companies that want us to try out new mm -hmm. things. And uh, um, that's, uh, that was a huge upgrade, but it was also a mental upgrade. Um, you know, I think that if you, you should never try and pay for things you can't afford mm -hmm. um, just to feel better or more, more official or whatever it is, the, the reasons you're doing that. Um, but when you can, sometimes moving out of your workspace and defining another workspace, um, for me, was important. Sure. Because I could work like 18 hours in the day. Mm -hmm. Like I could just never stop. And for me, I needed a barrier, but I also needed to treat myself like this wasn't a hobby anymore. Right. Um, and sometimes, sometimes even though you're, you're not doing that or you don't think you're doing that, it's, it's helpful to have your space, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. defined space. And so for me, that was helpful to say, look, you've got an office now, like grow up, treat it like it's a real thing. Treat it like, you know, your job's on the line if you don't, if you don't take it seriously. And mm -hmm. so that's been, that for me, I did that about 12 months ago, actually, you know, probably a little earlier than necessary, but, um, it was, it was good and it really helped Yeah, yeah. in the long run. 
Cool, cool. So it's, it's just the two of you. Yep. And uh, I think I overheard you yesterday uh, in terms of uh, your growth and the generation of content. At one point, you had uh, an addition for America, an yeah. addition for, for Europe. Europe, and yeah. then you just brought them together. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean. Uh, why two, and then why'd you bring them together? Sure. I mean, you know, the great thing about digital content is you can make early investments and you can scale them back. If something doesn't work, don't be afraid to change it. Mm -hmm. And so I noticed early on, and basically at the end of year one, the growth in Europe was just crazy. And, and look, we have two uh, we have two regionals competitions in Europe now. As this you know, this shouldn't come as as much as uh, as much of a surprise. The fastest gro single fastest growing area for CrossFit is in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, at the time, and so I was like, you know, we should create content that's specifically for that community. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was really challenging. It's challenging because of a language issue, but it's also challenging to find local stories. And we were, we were, you know, centered around that. And, you know, even though making connections in other countries and having somebody who was point for that, um, it, it was so challenging to do. Um, and then the other issue was, how do we make this financially viable? And so most of the sponsors in CrossFit are U.S.-based companies. In fact, most CrossFitters are U.S.-based. And so... Sponsors were unlikely to transition into um, wanting to sponsor European content. And so here you have this newsletter over here that doesn't, isn't able to generate a lot of revenue. It's a great idea. It's a great concept, but it's not able to genera generate a lot of revenue. So in order to make it big, you're going to have to advertise it. You're going to have to grow it, and that costs money. So, yeah, it's a great idea if you, have a, if you have enough money to play a long game, like a five, six, seven-year game. And you can say, well, maybe, maybe there'll be more companies, and there are today. Mm -hmm. There absolutely are. But it wasn't one that in our early stage, you know, we could invest twenty five dollars or $50,000 into growing it where I thought it needed to go. Mm, right. And so I said, look, we're one big family. We're going to put it all together. Um, and so we did. And now, now they're all reading it. And we have, we have great readership in other countries, too. A lot of, a lot of them in the English-speaking countries like mm -hmm. Ireland, England, uh, well, Iceland's not English speaking, but everybody speaks English. <laughs> right. yeah. um, Nordic countries, Australia, um, and then some of the other big, big CrossFit hubs like Spain and um, Germany. Mm -hmm. As you, yeah, that's crazy, man. As you're growing your business, when did you finally get that first like light at the tunnel, light at, light at the end of the tunnel where you knew like this is something that's going to be yeah. a real business that's scalable? <laughs> yeah. So we again early tr started to try and get sponsors we wanted we wanted to streamline um advertising content into one single location and, and make it uniformed and uh -huh. uh, make the user experience really good so i was like all right let's next year we're selling sponsorships i don't know if we're ready yet but we're going to go for it we got to start trying to sell we got to start trying to build those relationships and treat this like a business that generates income etc so i went out and i started trying to sell it and it was tough it's tough to convince people to trust your product yet. You know, I mean, um, if you've got Google money, you're big quick. Mm -hmm. We were big. I don't know if we're big yet. You know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, like, you know, I still struggle with it, whether or not we're, we're, yeah. we're big or not. But it was like, okay, you got to start, you know, pitching. Mm -hmm. Right. And you got to go through a dozen pitches. And then you got to go through two dozen pitches. You got to refine your pitches. And you got to start practicing. And you got to start doing that. But you got to start taking it seriously and saying, look, I've got a goal. I've got 52 weeks in the year. I've got 52 pieces of inventory. I got to sell 52 things to 52 companies or 48 companies, and they buy multiples or 25 companies, and they all buy four, whatever it is, yeah. you know. Um, and so I started going through, and it was selling was tough, you know. I, I tried to get more creative about how do we do this, or package it, or a value add for our sponsors, etc. And so um, we didn't sell much of the first half of the year. This was in 2017, so this was last year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we sold a little in regionals. We gave a couple away to get people to try it. We figured, why not? And by the games, after the cro we sold a bunch around the CrossFit games because everyone's like, yeah, that's, you know, that's high impact time. And we want to, you know, that sounds like a great opportunity to reach CrossFitters in a high impact you know, zone. So we sold a lot of those. And then after that, I was able to somehow turn a corner and I sold the rest of the year. Mm. So I sold maybe like, 10% of the first half of the year. Yeah. And then I sold all of the last half of the year. And I was like, okay. We actually had no money at one point. We yeah. were red in the bank account. Sure. But, you know, and I wrote a check to, to, to fund it with enough to, like, keep things going. We stopped all advertising. Like, 
the great thing about our company is the costs are so low yeah. to operate. The hard costs of actually operating, you know, the ESP and the and the web hosting and the other technology that we have to uh, pay for isn't too expensive. So I was able to write a check to float all of that, and then and then I was able to sell a couple, and then thankfully we've never been in the red ever since. But Good. we sold the whole rest of the year, and I was like, okay, maybe this can be a thing. Mm-hmm. And then I set goals for 2018, and we were actually sold out. Congrats, Thank man. You. Yeah, we Massive. sold out the first week of July for the whole year of 2018. That's awesome. And when you talk about selling, you're talking about ad space. Ad space, okay. yeah. The Morning Chalk Up is always brought to you by, sponsored by, powered by, built by, fueled by okay. some company in whatever category um, they kind of fit into. So, um, you know, uh, that's, we have 52 weeks of inventory. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we have 52 ad space spots. Um, so they... Uh, we're gone. We're 2019. So we're going to f- reset. People have asked us to buy 2019. And I'm yeah. like, no, we, we got to make sure <laughs> every year is an opportunity to reset and rethink the strategy here. Right. You know, and if you buy, if you sell too far out, then you can't make new relationships with, people, with other people. Absolutely. Right. And, right. and, and it's, not, it's not, I mean, I'm, I'm in the business of selling. I want to sell. But I also want to bring in new partners and um, give them an opportunity to, to dip a toe in the water and see if this is something that really helps their business. Right. Sure. sure. So we've said no. By about Q4 of this year, we'll open the door again. But we're going to spend the time post-games, so like not today, starting tomorrow, Mm -hmm. (laughs) thinking about making sure that the structure that we're doing adds value and benefit to the sponsors that we're working with. And because we have a nimble platform, we can be nimble. We can try new things. We can adjust it. And we can even adjust a new year if the if the partner you know agrees to try something new with us. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to try some new things in in 2019 um, that are already in the works. And so. Um, you know, it was about it was about that moment that I thought we had we had shifted, and then yeah. it re you know it reconfirmed that with me once we got into July, and um, we'd held back inventory for the end of the year, and in like two weeks it was gone. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and these are really some really solid companies that are really reputable companies that are deciding to work with us, and that's um, you know something that makes me feel great. Yeah, that that they're choosing to you know have a relationship with us you know financially. Like every people give you product every day long, but when they start <laughs> writing checks, you know. Like that's a res- you have a responsibility to treat that very seriously. Like mm-hmm. right. that's that's not a small thing. Mm-hmm. And um, you know it's been really humbling, but also just you know I, I go to sleep at night. I'm like, man, that's I just got off the phone with like General Mills. Like that's stinking cool. Yeah. Wow. You know, like Kellogg. Like that's yeah. that's like that's like real. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, tier one companies that mm-hmm. have um, obviously a lot of financial resources, but you know they've been in business for decades. Right. Right. You know, I've been in business for two and a half years, mm-hmm. right? And that's a cool thing. Sure, that's sure. a really cool thing. And uh, how does it feel within the context of CrossFit? Because I talk about this all the time um, with people that are starting their entrepreneurial journey, whether it's on the product side or uh, the physical space side, supplements, whatever. Um, you know, don't do business with the product do the business do business with the people Mm yeah you know what i mean and you're in a very um coveted position where you have you have access to the top of the ladder yeah Mm -hmm. you know and you can can have those those high level conversations and really ask for what you want and bypass all the gatekeepers along Mm -hmm. the way yeah how how advantageous is that to you uh, because of your platform, and how do you gain access to them above and beyond just being the morning chalk up? Sure. Um, honestly, I think one of the great <coughs> lessons that I learned in politics was, number one, I'm not starstruck, and number two, truth to power. So if you can walk up to a senior member of Congress, have a basic normal conversation, and then you can tell them why they're wrong, then you're in a good position to be able to go and walk and walk up to the CEO of any major company that's around here and have that same conversation. Um, it's not about being right. It's whether or not you know that you can sit down with them and have a conversation at their level and you're confident enough to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. And those were lessons that had I not had my former career, I would not be as good at. Because you're around all these big wigs. You're around the CNNs, the ABCs, the Tom Brokaws, you know, like... Uh, Chuck Todd's, you know, the guys are hosting these, you know, Sunday morning shows, and, and these people know what they're talking about. These are these, they're professionals, and um, some of them are very powerful people. And, and, and if you're down corralling with the with the Matthew Frasers and the Rich Fronings, can you fire off a question to them? Like, do you have the moxie to do that? And so I think um, bringing that to the table has made it a lot easier. And what I do is I just honestly I just email, call, 
Like a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I have a question for CrossFit, I go to CrossFit. Like I just go right to the source and I ask, like mm -hmm. I'll pick up the phone and have, a, or, or most likely send an email, you know, that, that has a question that I want answers to. And yeah. I treat it seriously. And a lot of, and some people don't, or some people just aren't really sure how to dive into that. And so, um, that's been an area of success for me because I don't feel like I, there's a barrier to having that conversation with somebody mm -hmm. or to picking up the phone and I just go right to them. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's being willingness to do that and put yourself in position to, yeah, to yeah. have that conversation with, with, with decision makers. Right. You know, the, uh, as you continue to grow, um, is there, uh, a mission or a project above and beyond the morning chalk up that's on your radar at this point? Yeah. Um, so one of the early mantras that I adopted is that a giving co community is a growing community. Mm -hmm. um, so we have um, we frequently donated to causes that, that we felt really close to, um, people that needed help or people that um, were, you know, in a, we were in a position to help them. So sometimes it's been actually writing a check to them, and sometimes it's been um, elevating their story to the front of our page and helping to do that. We did, we did something for the military in CrossFit Undisclosed. Like, we just published a story about them. It seemed like, you know, our U.S. Armed Services are over there with, like, lackluster, like, literally tape on boxes keeping them together and, like, other equipment that's falling apart. They're trying to get in a great workout over there. Um, uh, Al Udeid uh, Air Force Base in Qatar. Al Udeid, yeah. Al Udeid mm -hmm. uh, Air Force Base in Qatar. And um, I was like, man, this is exactly why we're here. Mm -hmm. Like, this is one of the underlying missions that we have is to say everybody here loves the CrossFit community. Everybody here wants to be involved in, in making sure that everybody has access to good, solid fitness training. And these guys really don't have a business over there where they can just buy equipment. They're, all of these are uh, separate branches of the military that are there uh, serving on that base um, in, in, various, in various roles. And it's not like they have like dues. You know, they're, it's free to go work out there. And I was like, this is why we're here, right? And we were able to, through this story, raise them a couple thousand of dollars overnight just by publishing that. And I was like, man, that's exactly why we're here. Mm. Uh, um, I've made a lot of great relationships um, with athletes, top athletes and, and up and coming athletes and um, folks in the industry. And I hope that one day we'll be able to run our own fundraiser, mm -hmm. something that's really meaningful and significant. And um, I think, you know, a lot of the athletes have appetite for that. The ones that I've <laughs> talked to, mm -hmm. I would love to be able to be more involved in that. Um, you know, last year we, uh, uh, we bought out half a movie theater for um, the fittest on earth when the documentary was was coming out, the mm -hmm. Redeem the Dominant. Yep. And in Hollywood, and um, you know, we brought this 14 year old who's actually competing here at the games, Maddie Espinoza. She's like eighth or ninth in her division right now. She, by the way, she just hit a 220 pound split jerk PR. Good Ooh. God. 14, strong, and she's coached by Matt, uh, James Townsend, who's yeah. uh, oh, yeah. uh, partnered with um, Lindsay Valenzuela. Young Tony. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, she'd, she'd been really going through a tough time at school. She was bullied really hard for how she looks physically. I mean, she's like, looks like a, like a, an athlete, Yeah. you know, and people like were saying really mean things about her being like looking like a man and, uh, you know, other really unfortunate things for, for a young girl that um, mm -hmm. really shouldn't have to hear that. And so we did a post about that on Facebook and asked at, like pro athletes to, to make comments about it. And mm -hmm. like we got Lauren Fisher, Val Voberol. Um, Margot Alvarez, and just to just to love on this girl a little mm -hmm. bit. So we brought her to a movie theater um, to watch Redeem the Dominant, mm -hmm. and sh we had like Tennille Reed like just walk down the street, show up, and this girl's like, "What's going on here?" Like Val Vobrol's <laughs> like walking through the lobby. You know, Maddie Curley was there, Heather Hippensteel, um, Jamie Hagia, and and you know, here's these like stunning, like fit, inspiring ladies and stuff. And I, I was like, this is this is why this is why we have this community, right? Because we, mm -hmm. we can help put this stuff together to inspire a young lady um, to hang out with some of the fittest on earth. We want to do like more like that. Mm. You know, I would love to have you know bought out a theater for a screening and do it as like a fundraiser for for young girls and like you know go with a bunch of CrossFit Games athletes, get the Lauren mm -hmm. Fishers, get Jen Dancer, you know, get these other other people to come up. And we'll sell all the ticket proceeds that get sold, you know, to a screening with these fit ladies. We can donate. 
to a cause that's important and significant. And I think we're almost there where we can pull it off successfully mm-hmm. um, and, and we can really help uh, make a difference. And like I said, a giving community is a growing community and that's, that's super important to have wise behind what you're doing because it's mm-hmm. not just about writing your own paycheck. Like if that's the only motivation you have, that's okay, but that's not mine. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, I think there's a deeper meaning uh, behind all of this. And it, at the end of the day, it would just be an email program. Mm-hmm. It would just be a newsletter, right? Um, and uh, and if I didn't believe in what the community does for other people, right? I don't know if I would love it as much. Mm. Mm-hmm. Where's that mindset of giving come from for you? Is it something that you learned from your parents growing up, or just through all the ventures that you've gone through? Well, I think I think as you know, a citizen of the world, like as somebody who op- has open has had their eyes open through my own work and and, and life experiences of having traveled so much overseas and, and been you know, on the front lines in, in D.C. on looking at real problems in America, mm-hmm. um, but also just seeing the generosity of CrossFit community. Literally, mm-hmm. I'm inspired by the generosity of the CrossFit community. Because we look at this and we cover this, we see so much of what people are doing and how they're trying to make a difference. And that has inspired me. Um, and I, I knew about that before I even got into Morning Chalk Up because you're seeing it everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, through CrossFit sponsored uh, fundraisers that they've done, um, and and then on through gy- sponsorships at our own gym or, or fundraiser at, at my gym uh, throughout the years, I'm just like, you know, it it's contagious. I think, mm. I think it it goes to show that that people can do good things, can do great things, um, and um, that just constantly is reinforced. The hurricanes and the tragedies that were going down there, and you have athletes like Dan Bailey going down there. Um, and uh, um, working against gravity, send a team down there. Brute strength, send a team down there. People to go just physically help, you know, people that had nothing or had lost lost yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that that mindset just comes from the the, the folks working out around me that sure. are mm-hmm. that are passing that on and, and inspiring me and, and believing that you know, look, like there's so much more than just the nine to five. Sure. And um, I think if if you believe that, there's you have no choice but to try and find ways to help other people in the ways that you can. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, and I love that. Well, I find that extremely interesting because of your previous career, you know, <laughs> in uh, politics, where it's like the I'm, least I'm, I'm, yeah, most selfish environment right. possible. <laughs> you know, that's uh, you know that that's where I'm from, right outside DC. Yeah. I, I spent a little bit of time in Quantico. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the mentality inside the beltway is just sure. very toxic, you know, fend, selfish, fend for yourself, Absolutely. you know, sink or swim, yep. you know, who, who do you know and who knows right. you right. and, right. you know, I can remember being, being out on a Friday night and, you know, meeting strangers or whatever. And, you know, it's not about who you are, where you come from or any of that other stuff. It's where like, can who, you get me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who do you represent? Who, who are you who's gonna, in, who's yeah. in your camp? You know? Yeah. And uh, it's very, you know, how many people do I have to climb over to get exactly. to where I want to go? You know? Um, so it, I, it, I think it's extremely interesting based on that, you know, t- potentially toxic environment that you walk yeah. away from that mm-hmm. uh, and have the abundance mentality yeah. that you have now. Well, I was definitely like that in D.C. I mean, okay. you, you do get involved. We call it Potomac fever. <laughs> you know? uh, and for those who are unaware, the Potomac River runs right through Washington, D.C. It's part of the reason why it's so dang hot in that city. Mm-hmm. But it's like you cross over the river and you get Potomac fever, and all of a sudden you become so um, narcissistic and... Uh, uh, you know, neurotic and, you know, you're, you, you get into the race, right? You get into mm-hmm. the rat race and mm-hmm. stuff. And, you know, it, as a young kid, young professional who's wanting to be successful, rise the rank, rise in the ranks and, 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 and ultimately grow and, and become, you know, the big dog. Um, you know, that was absolutely something. It was that, that hustle mentality was great. That hustle mentality has helped make me a better, uh, a, a CEO and business person. But, you know, at a young age, you kind of like, let it get the best of me and i was definitely you know the guy at happy hour networking and Mm -hmm. making friends shaking hands and going to you know dinners and lunches whatever it took to make the right connections to be successful and that Mm -hmm. i can take that mentality here but with more balance as i'm more mature now i'm i'm not that mature i'm 32 years old (laughs) but i am uh, a little bit more balanced in that approach there Mm -hmm. that um you know but it was a good skill to learn Mm -hmm. sure but I definitely got caught up in the Potomac fever okay. in the in the, you know, I wasn't all about uh, uh, abundance mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and that kind of life. Did you did you look at uh, 
Mitt Romney. So, ha- in the most li- literal terms, when yeah. when the candidate that you're you're working with sure. drops out of the race, do sure. you lose your job? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're you're not fired, but like you've laid off. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, so there's nothing for you to do anymore. Yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't with Mitt Romney. It was with Governor Walker, who's okay. here. I, I lived here for about ten months or so. I worked yeah. on his campaign for about mm-hmm. nine months. Um, I started working when I was in D.C., transitioning out here to move. Yeah. And I moved here about March of 2015, <clears throat> at the end of March of 2015, and um, I was here until October of 2015, okay. the end of October of 2015. And uh, yeah, so you know. The higher up you are, the more you know if the waters are getting rough. Okay. Uh, so I had a, a bit of an indication that things were going southward. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, then the call came, if you will. Sure. Uh, governor's going to be making a, an announcement in a few minutes that he's dropping out of the race. And we know what that is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for us who are a little bit older, we have been doing this a little longer and we're prepared for that. Mm hmm. Financially, as well as you know, mentally and emotionally, right. that's a part of the gig. That's part of what you sign up for. Yeah. Um, the younger guys, though, it's a little a lot harder. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's something it's their first or second job. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you don't get paid a lot in politics either. Mm-hmm. You know, um, not till you're like way up there on the top. But if sure. you're, you know, one of the hard workers uh, um, down at the bottom, uh, you know, it's it's uh, they're they they work hard. They don't get paid. They don't get compensated equally mm-hmm. for the amount of hours they put in. Yeah. Um, so some of them, it's a little bit more challenging. But you lose your job. That's what happens. Yeah. And um, so did you see that as your your opportunity yes. to do something new? Or was it like, fuck, now I have to find something <laughs> else? <laughs> no, I wasn't worried at all. In fact, um, I had been planning. When you get into a race like that, you plan. You know that the likelihood of winning is really small. 17 candidates one with an electorate that's going to go any number of directions of things that are unknown. It's like picking the Super Bowl winner in two years. It's not like next season. I mean, like in two seasons. That's like the probability of you actually, you know, guessing who it was going to who it's going to be mm-hmm. uh, for, for the nominee. Right. <clears throat> and so you prepare for the long haul, but you also know I'm prepared that it's might gonna might end. So mm-hmm. I'd already left the city. I'd moved all my stuff out of the city, and uh, I was prepared for a lengthy vacation when it when it ended okay um and knowing that it was probably going to be the case sometime later than i thought i thought we were going to go through the primary season um which came a couple months later it didn't plan out that way so i took a vacation anyways but i was prepared mentally for that to happen that that was a likelihood so Mm -hmm. i was feeling like i was going to take a break i needed a break i hadn't had a vacation in seven years yeah you know, I'd gone from one campaign to another, to back to Congress, to back to the RNC, whatever it was I was taking leave from to go, you know, help out on the ground. And um, you know, I'd taken a couple weekend longs. I'd gone home for Christmas, but like I had never really checked out at all. And mm-hmm. so I said, I'm going to get out of here for a little while. And I had I had opportunities with other campaigns. I mean, it's very common for for them to pick up top talent from another campaign and just immediately throw them on the next one because mm-hmm. that's what happens. That guy drops out. Those donor opportunities go over to this candidate. Their operation builds a little bit bigger. And, you know, when another one drops out, it kind of goes over. And there's plenty of opportunities for me to go. But I said, no, I think, I think if I'm going to make a real serious change in the trajectory of my professional career and my life, then now is the perfect opportunity to do that. Those jobs, those campaigns will be there when I get back. Because I was going to get back in late December. Uh, I took two months off. Yeah. I was going to get back in late December. The first primary wasn't for another month. So I came back. Sure enough, there was those job opportunities still there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I chose not to pursue them. Yeah. I chose to take a different path and say, this has been great. I've, ta- I've learned so much in this environment. But I'm going to go try to do something else. Because I believed that I was smart enough and capable enough and driven enough and hardworking enough to do it. So if you're going to do it, do it now. Yeah. Don't wait. Don't wait for the opportunity to present itself. Mm-hmm. This is the perfect for me. That was the perfect opportunity. You, I had my exit. Yeah. I didn't even live in D.C. anymore. So you know, if I had lived in D.C. and worked for a campaign that was centered in that neighborhood, it'd have been a lot more tough. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, to do that. But now you're outside of the city and you're halfway home. Yeah. You've cured yourself of the fever. Yeah. <laughs> Drop it. I, I moved over the over the Potomac River. I lost the Potomac fever, and. Um, 
Yeah, no regrets, though. Yeah. How, yeah. how was your support system during that time? Because I imagine your parents, like, coming from a pol- right. politic background, then going, the, hey, I'm going to use your basement and start the morning chalk up. Like, yeah, yeah. How was your support system at that uh, time? It was good. Mm-hmm. My family was really happy to have me back home. Yeah. You know, they, they had, um, I, I had missed a lot of birthdays and celebrations and fun times pursuing a career, um, sometimes selfishly. Sure. Um, and going back home, and, and they really just, they were just happy to have me. And so they were committed to doing anything they could to uh, make that transition a success. Um, so I lived rent-free. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Mm-hmm. I actually just moved out, like, three weeks ago. Congrats, brother. Well to, done, to, my, to my own condo in Anaheim. And uh, uh, I could not have done that or start the company uh, if I hadn't uh, been living uh, in my parents' pool house for mm-hmm. the last two and a half years. Um, so... Uh, worked out really well, mm-hmm. uh, but but it's yeah it, they just supported me so much in in the efforts that I had and, and a lot of late nights and you know I gotta go you know we're sitting down at the dinner table I gotta go you know we gotta we gotta finish up the morning track up you know mm-hmm. it's uh, it's a uh, it's been a long labor of love but um, you know that's honestly I don't know if I could have started that yeah anywhere else mm-hmm. other than having that support system. And that's extremely empowering, you know, to know yeah. that you have that. Yeah. I don't call it a safety net, but you know that that love yeah, and that that compassion for somebody that's in your corner. And sure. like, there's just just so much energy that goes into that, absolutely, and making you feel the success even more because, absolutely. like you said, it's it's beyond you now. It's for not only yourself but your family and yeah. everything that you've you know to get you to that point. So that's yeah, awesome. It man. is. It is. Uh, I've read a lot of entrepreneur stories. Uh-huh. People have done it in various different ways. I, I, I'm always inspired. I don't know. I'm like, I think about what I went through. I'm like, man, this is easy compared to what he did or what she did. Like, how does that, how do they do that? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think they're, they're, you know, not to be cliche, but where there's a will, there's a way. And mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> if you have great supporters in your life, mm-hmm. stick close to them. Yep. Rely upon them, friends, allies, family members, gyms whatever it is you're doing, um, that has made a huge difference in your ability to maybe just survive. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's just surviving through a tough day, maybe surviving financially, right. you know, which was the case for me because I, I wasn't generating a lot of income. You know, um, I actually still don't pay myself from the morning chalk right. up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but that's okay because I have another job <laughs> okay. that I'm able to, able to support myself financially through. Um, but, you know, whatever the sports system is, it's allowing yeah. you to do it. You stick close to them. That's uh, huge, man. You know, I, I, if I was by myself, literally by uh, myself, like, yeah. you know, living somewhere else away from my family, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could have done it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it says a lot about you in terms of uh, your commitment to your mission. Yeah. Because I think that has to come first yeah. before... Um, the lasting support comes through for you. Sure, you can crash on the couch for a night yeah. or, for a night or two. Of course you can. But are you still doing the deal? Yeah. Or are you just waking up at 10 a.m. and fucking off the rest of the day? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know uh, that allows that facilitates that support to to stay with you and continue to believe in you and just just watching you do the deal stick, yeah. stick with the grind and yeah. while you're you're figuring it out and then at that point nobody ever has to ask you the question like well how long do you think you're going to stick with this mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying as you know yeah. as we entertain these conversations with a lot of entrepreneurs at some point they were asked that question yeah and nine times out of ten for those of us that have you know eclipsed the hurdle of um, uh, proof of concept. Yeah, proof of concept. You know, that, que- that, cu- that question comes way too early because you don't really have an answer for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How long are you going to stay with it? Do you think it's going to work? Fuck, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, I just believe. I believe. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And that's, that's I definitely had, had that question asked to me more than one time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how long are you going to do it? I, I, I had some, I mean, look, I put my own end dates on things. Okay. You know, I said, look, like, um, if I can't, if I can't make X, you know, if we can generate X amount of revenue in, in, th- in, in this period of time, it's time to look for an exit strategy. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think you have to be smart that way. I, I don't think, you know, I have, n- I, I would never criticize somebody for holding on indefinitely to their dreams, but I am committed to figuring out a way to accomplish the goal. And sometimes not ev- for not, not for everybody, but for me, if I don't have an objective 
if I have to make a hundred, if we have to generate a hundred K in revenue by this period of time, otherwise it's time for an exit strategy, then the right, because the writing is on the wall, maybe I'm not good enough, but, but if I know what I've got to hit, then I'm going to hit it. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what you're going to hit, you might not hit it. You might hit it. You might surpass it two X over. But if you don't know, you don't know. So right. I put real like, okay, what is it going to take for me to quit my day job and do this? What's it going to take for me to hire another person? What's going to take for me to do this? And if you're specific about those, then you can you can work backwards with the math. If it's 100K at the end of the year, you know how much you need to generate from each sponsorship if you know what your inventory is. Right. If you need more money, you need to create more inventory. If you Or you charge more. Will they pay for it? These are the questions that you have to struggle with. And, mm -hmm. But you can't struggle with those questions of, hey, how about, ten, what about a thousand bucks? How about, how about fifteen hundred bucks? Mm -hmm. You look like you could afford it. How about twenty five hundred bucks? That's fine if you're shooting from the hip at the beginning a little bit. But when you get to the projecting, writing a budget for 2018, 2019, 2020, and saying, this budget supports me working full time. Mm -hmm. How do we get? to that budget mm -hmm. with what we have today. Okay, we can't get there with what we have today, so how do we make more? Right. How do we take something else and something new? Or how do we find a new opportunity for revenue? You know, oh, oh whoa, we could sell more merch. Oh, man, that could generate how much can that, we know what our profit margin is. Okay, we could get there. We could, we, we could get part of the way there, you yeah. know, and then you do that. So, you know, I put, a, I put my own time frames on me and say, look, like if I'm not working for myself, like if I'm not actually full-time staff on my own company in, in three years, I need to find an exit strategy. <laughs> because I'm working for free. Yeah, right. You know, and, 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 and yes, I love it. And I can continue to do that. But I have to be real about the decisions that I make. That's mm -hmm. time away from family. That's time away from a future family. And, and my ability to be, a, you know, hopefully a good father and being able to be there. And if I'm doing this, that's great. But if it's not helping my family, then I have to reevaluate the decision and the priority of the time that I'm putting into something. Right. You know? And so I'm very real about that. And if I know the objective and the goal, then I think I can find steps to accomplish it. So sure. I know what 2019 needs to look like. So mm -hmm. I'm figuring out today how to get there. Yeah. So that on January 1, we're already getting there. We're not behind, or maybe we're behind, but we know how far we are behind yeah. and we can move objectively there constantly and the relationships that on a professional level that we that in partnerships that we establish with other companies help us get there and we know we're doing it for a reason mm. and i think that's important for entrepreneurs who like to go willy-nilly again at the beginning you're shooting everything from the hip flying the plane duct tape and glue you're assembling it right there it's like wow we finally have seats in the cockpit it's amazing <laughs> you know that's real life oh, yeah. as an entrepreneur. And yeah. that, that may be real life for a long time. But the things that you can answer are how much I need to make and how much you know, that needs to be generated a month to get there at mm -hmm. the end of the year. Right. You, know, you can't pay yourself $60,000 at the end of the year. You got to pay rent months 1 through 11. Mm -hmm. So that means you can't you know, only make money you know, by the end of the year. You've got to make it consistently and constantly. And also, it's better to hit a lot of good singles than it is one home run at the end of the year. So yeah. you know, <laughs> like from a business perspective, it's certainly, you know, you're more likely to fail that way than you are if you're hitting you know, small singles. So um, I've been very deliberate about uh, knowing what numbers we need to hit. Yeah. Otherwise, we may never make it there. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. How would you define your life purpose where you are today? Life purpose? That's a good question. That's a deep question. <laughs> wow. Uh, no one's ever asked me that. Really? Yeah. I don't do a lot of interviews. <laughs> 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 but like over coffee, you know, neither, neither is that. They're more like, what is the morning chalk ups purpose or what are you guys doing towards? Man, um, I think that I've taken a huge step back in my life since leaving politics and said it's not all about me. You know, uh, I, I'm I'm Christian, and I I believe you know uh, that we are here for a purpose, and to serve others, and so I take that that role in it very seriously in what I do. For, that's why I believe a giving community is a growing community. That 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 funnels and and fundamentally is a part of my life. Mm -hmm. It's not separated. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean you know you read the morning chalk up. It's you know we're not preaching the gospel there. But, but if I was pouring a part of myself into it, and I think there is a little bit of me into it, it's that. 
it's that generosity. It's that we are not here just to serve ourselves. Mm. And, and so my life purpose is to continue to, to take that belief that I have without throwing Christianity in front of people's face, but, but saying, I, you know, we're, we're here for you and we want to help. That's a part of who we are. We're a company and we're going to continue to make money and hopefully support really creative, great people working at that company, give them an opportunity to do some awesome stuff and be a part of something that they believe in. And I think that is a great mission to have is to say, I want to be a great workplace that allows people creatively to do things. Mm. But behind that as a corporation or as a company, that generosity and being able to be there for people. And we get a lot of emails about like, how can we help and how can we help? One day we'll be able to help a lot more. And we're doing as much as we can a little bit at a time. So my life purpose is, is intertwined with what I'm doing. Mm. And, and I think that's why I'm able to pour so much of who I am into it. Um, Jessica, who's our, our new managing editor, is doing a phenomenal job. She asked me, like, how do you come up with these things? I'm like, I think about this all day, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. every day. Imagine if you thought for 365 days about something, what you would come up with. Right. And somebody was sitting down and asked, like, how, do you, how does Dave Castro come up with all these workouts? I'm like, that guy is obsessed about what he is doing. He is so intertwined and ingrained in every workout that that guy is there's no separation mentally for him Mm -hmm. passionately for him it is the same thing for him he is obsessed and i'm like uh, this is who i this is a part of who i am this is an extension of who i am and my creativity and what i want to give to the world and i hope to help other people in the world too through it and so uh and i'm just like my my mind is like Mm -hmm. you know racetrack of ideas for for all year so um Life purpose is, is, is intertwined in that, I think, very deeply. Yeah. Before we let you get out of here today, I want to ask you, ba- you know, going, piggybacking on your life's purpose, yeah. uh, breaking that down into the daily, I'm going to ask you two questions. You can answer them on any level, mental, sure. physical, spiritual, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever strikes you right now. And I'll ask them in succession before you answer. Uh, the first of which is, what do you do each and every day to feed yourself and kickstart the momentum for the projects that you have going? And the, the follow-on to that is, what do you do each and every day to fuel yourself and create that sustainable momentum over the long term? Ooh, those are great questions. Really great questions. So um, as a sponge, like, consider my, like the sponge mentality, I read, soak up ideas all the time. I start my day by filling my head with ideas. So I read everything. I read Vanity Fair. I read uh, Refinery29. I read the New York Times. I read Washington Post. I read Vox. Uh, I read them all. Politico. DC-based publications, New York-based publications, fashion magazines, GQ, culture. I immerse myself in information because I'm not the greatest creator on the planet. But collectively, they have generated some amazing ideas with large editorial board rooms, and they have come up and created content that inspires me to figure out new ways to present ideas and try new things for our readers. Mm. So I immerse myself in information. I completely just soak it up. Sometimes, and I do a lot of that at night, too, but that's the first thing I do in the morning, man. I read through everything. I'm subscribed to every newsletter on the planet and, uh, because I want to see. You know, I want to learn. Mm-hmm. As an entrepreneur, you are a learner. If you're not a learner, you won't be an entrepreneur much longer because you're constantly learning. And so I'm, I'm learning from other people. But fuel myself, I am a, I'm a man of routine. So I can eat the same thing every day. I can work out at the same time every day. And uh, it makes me happy. It mm-hmm. keeps me on. I'm, a, I'm totally ADD. So when I'm out of routine, it makes me less successful. So I fuel myself with family, with fitness, uh, and food. <laughs> I didn't even mean to be alliterative, <laughs> but uh, it worked out that way. Um, I, I have to be around people. I have to get people time to separate myself and wall myself off from uh, work. Mm-hmm. I have to work out. I have to work out seven days a week. Um, I have to do physical activity. Like it, it doesn't always have to be in the gym, but it has to be physical. It has to be hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got to eat. Like, and I love food. And I actually love eating good food. It really makes me happy. Mm. And it really keeps me going and moving in, 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 in the right direction. Like this week, 
tough. Not a lot of workouts. <laughs> a lot of good food, though. A lot of good food, but, uh, you know, not, not in the portions and in the time structures that I'm used to. You know, like I barely had I had, a, I had a breakfast from Flapjack this morning. If you haven't tried their Mighty Muffins, you might want to think about it. All right. All the right. 20 grams of protein, microwavable for 45 seconds, organic, brilliant. You could stop by their booth. They're one of our sponsors, our official breakfast sponsor, by the way. There you go. Okay. A little plug there for you. Hey. Yeah. Um, so I had one of those, and then I had some coffee, and then I ran over here, and, it, you know, it's jumbled. So yeah. And I feel the effects of that, though. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so that, that's, that's how I feel my body. Those, those three things are super important. It keeps me balanced. Mm -hmm. You know, and being an entrepreneur, you can go way out of balance real fast. Sure. Right. You okay. know, because you know, you're store manager, you're chief complaint officer, <laughs> you're <laughs> CEO, you're, you know, chief content creator sometimes, you yeah. know, you're social media guy, you're photographer, you're videographer, you're whatever your company needs you, f and you can go out of balance real fast. So mm -hmm. um, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not learning and educating myself and I'm not getting, f you know, fitness, family and, f and uh, fuel, like food wise, that's, that's not a good recipe over a long period of time. That's, sure. that's a train wreck and, and, yeah. and I get worn down and I can't create like right. I can't do my job. Mm -hmm. Sure. And where can this community go follow and support you both personally and professionally everywhere you're located, brother? Morningchalkup.com. There's a fancy little box up there. Uh, you can put your email address in it. Uh, we will gladly accept that. And uh, the next day you'll start getting the Morning Chalk Up in your in inbox. Um, if you're not about email, you can always just check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash morningchalkup. Uh, we post lots of good content up there. Um, a lot of the creme de la creme from the day, you know, something really great to watch, some articles you want to read and stuff, just just the good stuff. Um, otherwise, uh, shoot, you can stop by our office and just come hang out if you want to. we got plenty of fun little goodies that uh, sponsors have uh, graced us with. Grab a Fit Aid, grab a, you know, an RX bar or something like that. Um, yeah, otherwise, Red Wolf CrossFit. Dope. Huntington Beach, California. That's where I'm throwing barbells around. There you go. Having some fun, getting some fitness on. Yeah. Oh, baby. Well, hey, man, we really appreciate you stopping thank in. You. Dude, thank you. Thank you. You know, for everybody out there in the, the Feed Me, Fuel Me community, make sure you uh, hop on board the Morning Chalk Up, uh, you know, above and beyond the, the CrossFit platform that uh, Justin's built upon, it's it's the community effort that is really celebrated there. So make sure you get in there and, and, and support that, thank that effort. Thank you. So really appreciate you taking Thanks the time. Thanks for having me on, guys. We know, it's a lot of fun. we know you're super busy. Ah. And, uh, you know, we pre appreciate you making us a priority. So Absolutely. we can get you to spread your message. So until next time, guys, feed me, feel me.